Hello, and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, May 10th, 2020, and I'm Larry Rhodes, Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. And sings my soul, my Savior died for me. How great okay. that was! <laughs> How great thou art. You have a great, great voice. Praise Quab. Praise Quab. <laughs> and our guests today are Joy Woods. Chad, well, Chad's not here, but Boudreaux is. And Dread Pirate Higgs. Say hello, Arr. guys. Hey, hey. Uh, I leave anybody out? I don't think so. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Almost, well, I guess I did miss it. If you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There sure. are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville. And we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Did you know that there was a streaming call-in atheist video show broadcasting right here in Knoxville? Did you know that? Well, Matt, it has been for 10 years. I have not been. Well, I tried to watch it. I only got to the second episode. I feel really bad about the tigers. I feel like if you make uh, a show about how tigers are exploited, but you're kind uh, of exploiting the people yeah. who are exploiting the tigers, you're still, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, exploiting tigers. Well, yeah, like, well, I can't watch a show with that. I agree with you 100%. But that okay, has nothing I couldn't to watch do it. with our atheist call-in video show. <laughs> One of these days you'll find it. And we'll be telling you how right after the mid-show break, so you can check that out. Remember, if you don't have an atheist group in your town, start one. Nice. Easy, easy as that. Uh, if you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for our Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and use the messaging function to send questions or comments. Uh, Wombat, what do you have for us today as far as a topic? I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about, but actually I want to throw this one out to Eric. Uh, Boudreaux, you had a really cool topic that you wanted to bring up, and I wanted to freestyle on that. So we might spitting what we're about to uh, drop down today? Certainly. And uh, I love, love the way you characterize my question to make it even more fitting for this group. Uh, so, so the idea kind of spawned from being on Facebook, which I know many of us are doing too much of. And yeah. uh, <laughs> it, incites, <laughs> it incites bad emotions and yeah. thoughts and arguments. It, for me, but, it's a cycle between Twitter, Facebook, and then Reddit. And then I was like, I hate all these places. And then I just go to the next place. And I'm just yeah. in a circle. I'm like, why am I yep. wasting time? Yep. It's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, but uh, some, some friends of mine, some intelligent friends of mine, uh, post these off-the-wall crazy things. Now, I say that because it seems crazy to me, but to them it probably isn't crazy. Hmm. But uh, you will see posts that make claims that just don't even echo anything of scientific reasoning or backup or evidence, but people are clinging to these thoughts and these these things and memes and they're sharing them and other people are buying into it well and give I me think, an example well what one was um uh, a, a top 10 list or, or however many of of things happening currently with COVID-19 and basically saying do I think it kills people yes do I think um uh, the hospitals are being overrun. Yes. And, and it goes down this list and it just gets nuttier Sounds good and so nuttier. Far. <laughs> yeah. Sounds, yeah. Sounds, Sounds good so it's, far. What's the problem they're, here? They're trying to no, they're, they're trying to hook virus. You. Yes. Yeah. 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 They're, they're trying you? to, they're trying to say, I agree with these things, but then do you think that the government is taking away our liberties? Do you think that the media is conspiring to create this uh, politicalization of, I, it just kind of goes off the rails from there and it keeps going. And I, and I think your point uh, Wombat was how do you, how do you engage with these people on Facebook or how do you engage with them at all? People who um, are your friends, but are yeah. posting kind of nutty stuff. I, I, it's almost like, stuff. what's like, the right word for it? Like Snopes. Like when someone posts something and you put a Snopes link on there saying, Hey, this has been debunked. You just don't stop posting this. It's, you're just, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And and they get mad. And, and how mm. do you, so, so I, I'm, I'm out of ideas. I've tried to engage with people before and it just makes them mad. And Well, and, tell me what didn't work and then yeah. we can work, learn from that. Well, I guess uh, I, I've, I've found that one friend in particular hated the fact that I challenged them openly on Facebook. You know, like, hey, you should have private messaged me this. And I think they're, they're embarrassed. Um, 
but you know they're the ones making the open claim on facebook right. so it's true i didn't i didn't think i'm i'm not allowed to openly disagree with them uh, another way i try to engage someone recently is someone posted a a, a response to the the pandemic the video i don't know much about it but it's another what is this thing that people are referencing man this is it's this is the fourth plan, time i've heard pandemic. about it this week I, yeah, yeah, yeah this is, pandemic. I gotta this is this out. I don't want to know what it is, but I also want to know what it is just so I can have a conversation. But I don't want to know about it. It's, it's the Sam Harris of, oh, yeah. <laughs> of coronavirus stuff. Just, just could you briefly inform me or anyone else who's wondering, like, what the hell are these? What is this portmanteau that you're putting together? All I know about it is it's some anti-vaxxer doctor who I think has been kicked out of the scientific community for posting, for publishing erroneous data and, 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 and faked data and changed data. Um, and it keeps getting removed from YouTube or other places. And people are mad about it because they think the media is pulling down this real science that the scientists don't want to show. Depressing. And, yeah. Um, the, the theories. Yeah. yeah. And, and my, my reaction to that is, you know, Hey, th this, this, whoever this lady is, she doesn't need to convince us non non-experts she needs to convince the other experts and if she can't do that i but we shouldn't give it any time of day i think yeah you know, but I, I think i wish that was a majority mindset and but at the same time i my question would be is it really beneficial and productive to delete it you know why not just let people like us comment on it and put you know snopes links in yeah, when you delete it, it just makes a lot of people think that's kind of shady and they kind of are more drawn to it yeah. than they would. Yeah, but people, people don't like facts. <laughs> the thing about it is, if they post it on Facebook, they're inviting a comment. I mean, that, that's, you know, they, unless they have comments turned off, then if, if that's the case, then you can just bypass it and go on. Mm. But if they, they post it and leave comments open, they're asking for it. They're asking for you to comment on it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. You have the ability to, don't you have the ability on Facebook to say no comments allowed mm -hmm. on a post? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Turn off commenting. Then it's free form, baby. Yeah. Though I do think that when you are, a lot of people post not thinking that they're in a, in, a, in a public setting. They just do it because they think, oh, this is my safe little bubble. Of course, I can post it here. I don't need to put these safe walls. And they also aren't used to getting challenged on the internet because the internet very much caters to you as a as a potential customer of ads <laughs> such that if i look up apple i've done this before i've looked up apple on my computer and i get the company and i get the stock price that's associated with it and my friend will look up apple and he gets the fruit and my other friend will look up apple and it's because it's, it's apples of fruit yeah sure. like people, people yeah. are like what what apples are fruit it's like absolutely larry why are you giving me that confused look no, I, 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 I'm it's with you. It's an algorithm in, that these things I, are following, right? Yeah, if yeah. I put in Apple, I'm going to get stock prices or something. You know? Yeah, because Google's like, well, you are a person of blank and blank. You're male. You're blah, 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 blah. We know what you want when you say this. And so the whole internet, more or less, is looking through your cookie history and being like, when you put in this weird gibberish keyword phrase, we already know what server to pull the information from, and we know what you're going to look at next. And we know what you're going to probably going to buy next. So we're going to throw these ads out here at the right time. And the internet just becomes this place where every, you're always happy because you're always seeing what you want. And then here comes, you know, Boudreaux's little <laughs> counterclaims like, actually, here are some facts that show that you're wrong. It's like, <laughs> not in my world. Get out of my domain. How dare you? How dare you, sir? How do I disable comments? Do I need to do that here? Do I need to lock my doors? <laughs> Gary... I'm wondering, like, is Canadian Facebook any more polite? Because you might be no. our last bastion. No, <laughs> oh, no, absolutely not. Oh. And I, I find actually in this, uh, in this, uh, you know, the small town that I, I live in, um, it's very acerbic. I, there's, you know, on everything, um, and I, I always try to to stay on my uh, Dread Pirate Higgs account, um, just because I. Uh, I only speak to the people I'm interested in talking to. Mm. Um, if I go on my generic uh, Gary Smith account, it's, you know, it's the, you know, the unrestricted uh, flow of the, you know, essentially the sewer pipe of Facebook. So. Yeah. Yeah. Joey, 
how do you feel about the idea of you had mentioned that you wanted you didn't want the video to be deleted is there ever a point in time where it might be good to control how media is being delivered like if there was for example the video could have further drive people to do more crazy things or cause hate crimes or i don't know whatever is there a line is there a line where it's like it was probably a good move to delete it at this point like we're just not in the mood where we need more inflammatory information at this point i see it, it's a very it's 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 not a very black and white topic because it, it, it goes down the road of uh, freedom of information. Mm. And it's almost just, my only response would be is, I just wish it didn't have to be deleted. I wish it just, nobody would be interested in it because people would know, people would do their own research and know that that's just bullshit. Mm. But I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <We'll cry>. wah, wah. <laughs> Have to write that one down. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, uh, I, I, so I don't really know because at, at what, oh, what's the motive behind it? At what point, you know, you're trying to, uh, you know, protect people from themselves or protect protect people from false information. I mean, how far does that go? And wh who's to say what's false information? And that's like, when we have the freedom to do our, shouldn't, it, would it be best to, for us all to have the freedom to do our own research? I mean, if it, you know, um even if even if a lot of us go down the wrong road it's just i, I don't know it, it it just enters into a, a grander topic about you know what uh, what power should a corporation have and what how what kind of power should a, a government have over a, a people too you know it goes down to down to that it's just so actually more. i actually looked i actually looked at that top 10 list and at the start it seemed like it was building up some yes momentum which is like hey do you have two thumbs i have two thumbs sure Hey, do you breathe outside? I breathe outside. Is there a virus going on? Yes. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was like, started getting, you're right, Bujo. They were started getting a little like squirmy with the words. Cause I was like, shouldn't I keep agreeing with this? And I think that one of the things was like, is American liberties being, or American rights being violated by, you know, like the, the idea that you have to shelter in home. And I was like, I mean, I, I understand the idea of like, we have a right to protest and go outside, but like, not if it's absolutely detrimental to, yeah. like, if you go out and die from a virus that you can't control, I think like, or most kill others. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'd be like, okay, there's a line here. You virtually protest. You don't literally have to hold a picket outside and be like, ah, oh, I'm angry because no one's going to see you anyway, because no one can go outside. Maybe it was a, uh, just think about it for like three seconds. So I'm going to say no here. And then as you went down further and further, it was like, no no <laughs> no no so you know that's a list of 10 different things maybe six things that i don't agree with where do you even begin to start with as far as like your response to like wow i just saw you post this how can i even formulate a response Buja, what would you even how would you even begin what's 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 the response format? this is where I mean, we've got the, uh, the, the mind trust here. I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping we could answer this question because I really mm -hmm. am, my, my, my instinct now is, to, is to, to continue to be friends with this person and not say anything. Mm, and whoa. I mean, I, that's, that's where I feel like I'm stuck. I want to, right. um, the, the, I will say the other example I gave was someone posting the pandemic video and uh, someone has had posted a kind of debunking video of that. Wow. And I, and I, and I said, thank, thank you for sharing this. I, we really need this out there. Cause a lot of people, uh, Joey, as you're saying, I mean, they don't have, they don't have, I think the, the capability of, of detecting th that it's wrong. So they're buying it. So, so in a response, I let's put out a video that debunks that, that junk video. And I tagged the person that shared the pandemic video first. Okay. In it. And I said, yeah, thanks for posting this. A lot of people need to see this. Really smart people are buying into this stuff. Yeah. What do you think, tagged friend? Zero response from him. Zero. But on his own post, he was, he was plenty uh, willing to argue with me up and down. So, Larry, yeah. you're, you're, you're a social media uh, wizard. What, what is your take on like, all of this? And how would you well, go about responding? <laughs> The main response, I would think, is that uh, the coronavirus doesn't respect anybody's rights. I mean, it, it, there's just no rights involved. I mean, if you get exposed to it, whether you're inside or outside or somebody outside ignores um, 
the threat because they say that they have rights to commingle and then go <laughs> go visit their their grandparents at a nursing home or something and the, and that starts a pandemic in the inside the nursing home that's just totally irresponsible yeah i mean and and the rights go out the window we have to there are, there are levels to your rights and mm. uh, the level the right to uh, societal health i guess is is higher than your personal right Sure. Like the idea of a it's social all part of welfare. the social contract, right? Exactly. Right. It's my well-being that we really have the rights for. And if you're doing mm -hmm. something that harms the well-being, even if you're exercising rights, you're not really mm -hmm. going towards the foundation of why we have rights in the first place, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. Can I point out the crux? Can oh, I point out the crux with this argument, though? Go for it. Go for it. Sure. Some people are claiming, mm. claiming using science, that. Uh, it's not true. It's not having the death rate and all, all the all the other stuff that we're hearing. So, if if the question is, we're telling you to stay home, but your liberal scientists, your brainwashed liberal scientists, are lying to us about the problem. Now, and and again, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here because obviously I agree with science in this case. Now the argument is, we are not trying to tell you to stay home because of the dangers of spreading this thing. We're telling you to stay home because we're lying to you about this and it's some power trip or control. Yeah. Trip. Well, so, I think yeah. that it's not just the power trip. This is an election <clears throat> year and people congregate uh, town halls. They, they go voting. They do all kinds of things. It's a political activity, which is a protected political activity to congregate. It's right. protected by the Constitution. Right. And uh, some people say that this, uh, this is all a hoax to keep us from congregating to keep us from uh, being politically active during an election year. From occupying the streets. Yeah, my, so, so. Yeah. my main issue with this is just that, I mean, the, the government is not, their, their hands aren't clean. And I get this, the, the, um, the suspicion of, of, of things, but if you look at the quote, power grabs that governments do, there's profit involved in, in their power grabs. And I fail to see what the profit is here. What's, yeah, what is the profit? If there's a power grab going on, it's just like, what? what is their, what, what's their point? What's the, what's the long-term uh, power play? Well, yeah, well, the power, if you have power, you can generate profit. If you lose power, you, you lose the ability to generate profit, you know, from being in, in office. So, I mean, that's where you, the conspiracy theory comes from, that you can, can't congregate. Yeah, but you uh, can't that would keep them, there's like no economy. It, it is damaging. <laughs> yeah. but why would they do this in the first place? Well, I, I see, I see a failure. I, I see a failure in the argument that it's preventing us from congregating because mm. we're congregating. We're online here, five yeah. of us from all yeah. different parts of the country or North America here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really actually driving us together in in some respects because I'm having now more conversations with people. I am more inclined to, um, is, you know, empathize with or sympathize with in, in terms of, you know, subject and content and all that kind of stuff, as opposed to just listening to the, who's available. Right. You and I don't, saying? and I don't think, I think in the same epistemological way where we always try to think of a better way to think, mm -hmm. we can think of better ways to protest in the circumstances that we are currently in. Absolutely. If there was a volcano outbreak, like the movie Volcano, amazing movie, you got to watch it. It's amazing. I just oh, I you're watching it. all the old '90s movies. Is it's it like amazing. Dante's Peak or something? No, it's like uh, Armageddon, but cheesier. Yeah, it comes from the earth. Yes. So, like, if there's vol, if there's literally lava all throughout the streets and it's burning cars and melting everything, you want to go outside and protest, like, "Hey, I hate lava. Like, this is bad because you're standing <laughs> yeah. in the lava." It's like, no. Let's just think about this a little bit and like take the high ground and find better places to do this safely. We can still protest, but let's do it in a way that's very safe that makes sure that we still exercise our rights, but we aren't causing needless harm, which is the main reason why we have these rights in the first place. And if it, if it, if we can do, if we can still protest and if we can still congregate, then maybe we don't have to have a picket and be out in the street where we're coughing on each other to protest. Maybe there's better ways to do this. And I think yeah, because of that, is. I don't right. think there's an infringement on my rights. I still feel like I have the ability to do all the protesting and congregating that I need to do. As uh, Gary just pointed out, we're congregating right now, mm -hmm. but there's a better way to do it. And it goes back to, are people willing to 
critically think for just a moment and, and come to that conclusion on their own? Or are they more inclined to just hear someone say, this is violating my rights and allow the emotion to find a connection with something that's not necessarily based in reason? I feel like we, it's very easy to fall into those traps over and over again. Right. I, I have this concern that there's something a, a little deeper going on. And I mentioned this over the, the messenger. It, it almost seems like they're looking for a fight. Like they've been like a lot of these guys that are, you know, going to the protest with AK 47. Oh. Like it's almost like they've been waiting. Like they, they've been waiting for an opportunity to, to show their patriotism and pronouncing it in, English. No, you said it in French. So, like, uh, Gary was laughing. He understands. He's like, oh, yeah, finally. finally. Patriotism. 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 But anyway, <laughs> show their patriotism. To show that, you know, it, it's just, but, but it, it just, it just doesn't seem to fit. It almost seems like, I, I, I don't know. It's just a very bizarre. <laughs> yeah, like, what are they going to do? Shoot the, the virus or something? It just... We're, we're going to assemble and we're going to do it with guns. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at that, but, you know, there are some people who probably believe guns could solve that problem as well. Like, it, I, would never take, I never take the opportunity to say, like, there's going to be someone out there who's just like, I, I have min-maxed. I, I, this is just a very quick tangent. There are some people who like soda, carrots, school cars and like maybe basketball right and then there are some people who just like one thing and they're all about that one thing and sometimes guns are for that one person they're just like i'm all about guns i've min max all my skills all my intelligence points everything into guns and so, so if there's a virus no outbreak, what else i do i'm gonna have a gun exactly if there's a virus outbreak i got a gun if there's a zombie outbreak gun if there's a anarchy in the streets gun if i need a help deliver a baby tomorrow I got a gun. I'm something's gonna <laughs> something happens. I got my gun on me. Step one. Everything else. Step two. Push and push. push. Yeah, exactly. You better push. I was like, I'm pushing. There's I'm pushing. Just, I'm pushing. That, it's like I'm that, helping. I have the gun. There's that saying uh, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Exactly. Yeah. And so <laughs> the idea of resolving coronavirus that. with an AK-47 is very funny. But I imagine there has to be at least two people out there who are like. That's a good idea, Larry. Thank you for giving it to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you do? All right. All right. So we got five minutes left before we wrap up. How about this? Just as a quick wrap up session, um, we're going to be talking about um, crazy things that we've heard on the internet and how we can approach them in a better way. And does anyone have, uh, let's see, uh, Joey, Larry. You, you, like I said, you are a social cat. You've been on the internet. Have you heard any crazy things on the internet, like relating to the coronavirus panic and, and, and people are scared and they're trying to figure out, hey, like, here's a conspiracy that I've fallen into. Uh, no, um, not, nothing came, comes to mind. Uh, somebody else answer, if you will, and I'll think about it and see if I've if had, came up with anything. I've literally had a... Um, uh, DM to me and messenger from one of my old English teachers saying that we need to cover our gas exhausts because that's where the virus is coming from. And so there was instructions oh. with how much Kleenex that you need and a rubber band to put over your exhaust to keep the virus from coming out. Just and give I them just a potato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I saw that message and I, yeah. And my response to that, and this happened like maybe three weeks ago, my response was, what virus? <laughs> and she responded like, are you serious? And at that point, I just had to like archive the conversation. I was just like, I can't deal with that today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that was a teacher that I've had in the past. So like, I don't think wow. anyone is, and I, I, immune. I'm, no one's immune. No one's immune. So I'm always wondering in my own head, what kind of biases I'm carrying around with me. And those are going to be the most interesting ones, of course. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I'd say we're at the bottom of the half hour. Larry, why don't you take us out? Okay. This is digital free thought radio hour and WOZO radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short message. 103.9 FM, Wozo, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Simply the best. <laughs> nice. I like it. I love it. I love it. Hey, we got an ad this time. The ad is for soap. Hey, do you like saying wordy dirties? Do you have problems not cursing when you told not to? 
I have the solution for you. It's called soap. You put it in your mouth. <laughs> you just wash have it your around put it in your mouth every single you. time. It's amazing. <laughs> and it saves the world editing time. Isn't that amazing? It's so wonderful. Get soap today. Go outside, get soap, put it in your mouth, and, and be clean for the rest of your life. All right, back to the show. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Dr. Five. This is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, May 10th, 2020. Welcome back to the second half of the show. Let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. We have over 1,000 members now, and you can join us online at knoxvilleatheist.org or go directly to Meetup. It's a Meetup group. And uh, join the Meetup group uh, searching for Knoxville Atheists. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, and you should go to meet up and search for a group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Start one. <laughs> That's right. Nice. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville, the Rationalists of East Tennessee. RET can be found at rationalist.org. Uh, go there and click on upcoming events to find out what they're up to. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about Knoxville's Atheist Call-In TV show. Um, Wait, we have an called? IFIAS call-in TV show? Yeah, it, it could happen. It's been going on for 10 years here in Knoxville. It's been going out on the community TV uh, radio of a TV station. However, this year we've changed to YouTube format so that we uh, can do our own thing there without having to pay this local studio. Um, go to YouTube and search for three words. Free Thinkers United Coalition. Of Knoxville, okay, four words. Oh my god! Remember, you can find archives of their show on YouTube, where a fan has been posting them. Also, if you're interested in becoming involved with the TV show or this radio show, uh, you can come to an Ask Meetup RET meeting or just talk to us about it. Go on uh, Facebook, look for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, and leave us a comment. With us on the show, we have the Wombat. Yo, I'm the Wombat. Joey, we have Boudreaux and Dread Pirate Hicks. Um, pick up the comments uh, and let us know what you think. Okay, so we were talking about uh, conspiracy theories, uh, no, strange so like, facts. Uh, yeah, like what do you do when your friend starts posting crazy stuff oh, on yeah. Facebook? Mm. And then how can you start that conversation with them to hopefully build the bridge for them to get back to the land of reason? Because you obviously like this person, you care about them, and you've never seen them post this way, so maybe it's easier to get them back to a more copacetic state of mind. The one that, well, you know, attracted you to them. The first, the first thing place. I do is look it up in scopes and then give them the link. Uh, I'll look it up somehow, give them uh, information that, that, that debunks it. Tell me out. What is scopes? That's all you can do. And is scopes superior to like, say like Wikipedia or just like a, you, like a you mean Snopes, up? right? Snopes. Snopes, right. Yeah. Ah, okay. Scopes, okay. 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 Snopes. It's a website. Yeah. I think, a, it, um, I think website. it also depends on how well you know somebody and if they are amenable. Maybe they're, if they're in any kind of mindset to have a civil discussion about anything or that particular topic. So, And, and yeah. I think the biggest thing is don't, don't uh, ad hominem. Like don't go after them as no. a person. No. Don't call them stupid or that's a ridiculous idea. Mm -hmm. It's stay yeah. calm, don't panic, and proceed calmly right what and answer claims with facts yeah so here so if i was i and help me out here and i i try not to get involved in internet arguments in the first place but i found that when i'm doing my se i never make a comment directly at the person who's holding the belief or a comment directly at the conclusion that they have i'm only interested in that thread that's connecting the two and i sure. always always ask questions about how did you arrive at this conclusion? Because if it came there reasonably, I'll believe whatever the conclusion is. So I don't oh. care about the conclusion and I don't care who's given it to me. I just mm -hmm. care about that method. And so if someone says something crazy, I'll be like, how did you come to that conclusion? And if they say, I read it in a fortune right. cookie, that gives me all the grounds I need to be like, are fortune cookies reliable? Is this the best way to come to it? Is there a better way? But what's a better way to come to this same conclusion than this one that you're using right now? And until then, until we have that better way, why are we putting so much confidence in this mm -hmm. one particular mm -hmm. method? But mm -hmm. I don't know if that works in a Facebook setting. Like, I don't think a lot of people are willing to have that extended kind of conversation. And that's the disadvantage that I've noted when, I, when I'm about to post 
on a comment thread because I know I don't have the time to invest. And I know the way how I speak and like the temper and the syncopation that I'm using and the body language that I'm using won't translate well when someone's reading my words in their head and, and putting, I don't know, maybe they make a nasal like, Tyrone said this, and I don't, I can't respect this voice. It's like, no, don't say it like that. Put my, put the bass in, baby. Put that, what's that guy's name? Who was the guy? Barry. Eric, who was, who was the guy who helped us set up the tent who was like the famous atheist dude? You know who oh, I'm Seth talking Oh, Seth Andrews. About. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. The guy who's always up on the mic whenever he's doing his podcast. But when he's helping us, <laughs> and when he's helping us set up a tent, he's like, hey guys, you need some help setting up the tent? <laughs> You're like, who's this guy? Is that Seth Andrews? Hey, I, I'll, I'll help you guys out. Thanks. I'll hold my tape recorder. And it's like, okay. Anyway, I'm back to being Seth Andrews. Hopefully now. he doesn't follow. Seth, I don't know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would theorize that, uh, you know, sometimes the uh, insertion of emojis helps to uh, um, relate some of the uh, gesticulations that uh, might not be translated over uh, by what you just simply write. Mm. Just, just to put a smiley face or a wink or a, Dread Pirate, you kind of oh. triggered me now because there are very few black emojis <laughs> and I'm tired of being uh, represented by a yellow Simpsons character. Well, I'm I not want, yellow, I either. want my emojis. <laughs> now this, this is beautiful. <laughs> Ty doesn't have an iPhone and iPhones iOS app launched a long time ago. The ability to pick your, your skin tone, every emoji. Oh, on the phone, whoa. Can, that's yep. cool. Really, I want that. Right you, Wait, you can be like you can be like light skin brown yeah. kind of brown really dark really yep oh, yeah. oh wow yellow that's what we need yeah. that's what we need <laughs> i'm tired of like hey that's not my thumbs up whose thumbs right. up is that that's not that doesn't look like my hand whose now, hand is now, this now my well, question on facebook are all blue oh yeah that's right <laughs> maybe i don't know it's been a while Facebook but I'm not blue either. I screw. Uh, there are some blue people out there. <laughs> they're like, finally. Hey, in, Ken in Kentucky, there are. They're, yeah, they're it's true. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole family full of them. They're just sad. <laughs> they're blue. In the Las uh, Vegas. So blue with that information, group. like with the idea of like, how can you really address an epistemology over the internet? Like, what's the best way of doing that? Larry, what do you think? I've just been doing it just you know, finding facts and like Googling it um, from good sources. And, and I'll try to uh, approach him with a, a knowledgeable um, orientation, I guess I should say, and just address the claims and, and debunk them as best I can. That's do you do only it publicly or do you like try to find oh, them publicly? One publicly. Okay. Okay. I mean, because yeah. all of my stuff, if I can do any of it, I try to do publicly. Uh, the reason being, if you if you don't convince that person, the mm. other people reading it may understand where you're coming from and, mm -hmm. and be convinced. Right. Mm. So, yeah, it might be enough just to stop them from. Yeah. yeah. Dread Pirate, what do you think? What's a good way to address epistemologies over the internet with someone um, on the internet? Well, I, I think pretty much in the same way that uh, that Dutter Five was saying. Um, again, I just try to proceed as calmly as possible, insert as many uh, links to reliable and credible. Uh, sources of information and um, and just try to make a good argument. What do you think is the likelihood of any of those links being clicked and then processed in the same way that someone who's biased against that information will interpret? But this is the, and again, to share uh, um, Larry's uh, point is that it's not necessarily that the person to whom I am responding with these links is the person to click, right. but the person who might otherwise be swayed by what these persons are saying how who have not yet been convinced of his uh his so that's truth a, that's yeah that's a significant and nuanced point you're not trying to have a conversation with the person you're talking to you're really talking to an audience you're exactly. really debating you're not having a nasty conversation that's right so you're really exactly. not talking about the epistemology at all but the nature of the question that i'm asking is i found it to be ridiculously effective to talk about the epistemology rather than throwing out kept fact, counterfact, fact, counterfact, fact, counterfact on a conclusion that may absolutely be completely incongruous. Like that's mm -hmm. not a true conclusion, but if we're just fact counterfacting and allowing people to come in and cherry pick whatever they want to support their own biases, isn't there a more effective way to have these kinds of conversations? And I found like with SC there is, it's about talking about the methodology, but how do you have a methodology conversation on the internet? Right. And, and that's something I haven't been able to really nail down either. Here's what I'm hearing, Ty. Let me know if Talk you think to me. this is a, a way to approach it. All right, you you engage with the 
the the person making a claim that you disagree mm. with mm. um maybe you private message them and say hey uh, i i i don't agree with what you're saying and i have reasons you know or how, however you set it up but maybe you ask them can we do a, a zoom call 15 Ooh, minutes i just, love that just get on zoom the two of us hash this out and no recording come, yeah if we come up with something that we both agree on, let's post it on Facebook. Oh, in that's channel. good. Oh, that that? that's good. That, that's excellent. That's a great idea. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. Now, because now there's no audience. You are talking yeah. to each other. There's some humanity there. I know like we, we were over a screen, but I can't, I can't spend more time looking up why you're wrong than listening to you and hearing you. Right. So, and I hear you for what you're saying. And I yeah. think, mm -hmm. yeah, Pull it out of that ring, pull it out of that arena and get it to more just on a personal level where you can talk to each other. And then if yeah. they both agree, post it back on the internet and be like, yeah. hey, I just had this conversation with yeah. this guy who posted this stuff. Yeah. This is what we came to as a result. Well, Boudreau, uh, have you done this before several times or uh, is this uh, something that you're thinking about doing? Uh, have I done the, the Zoom chat? Yeah, I like that mm -hmm. idea. The, the, I, I have not yet. Uh, I'm just inspired by by Ty's yeah. wisdom to, to, yeah. to think about. Oh, that's so, inspiring. That's a really good idea. Yeah. I like that. But, it uh, also shows that you uh, care, you know? Like, no, it's I not, think it's a good idea. I just wonder how often, you know how it is that you get on uh, Facebook or whatever and you start chatting to somebody about some bad idea that they have and they just stick by the guns. They won't change it no matter what you think. And then they start um, coming down on you at homonym. I was yeah. just wondering how often that would happen face to face. <laughs> I don't know. I think face to face would be a lot harder compared to just writing someone off in, in a world of cancel culture that we live in right now. Mm -hmm. It's so much yeah. easier to just hit a race when you see a word you don't like. But mm -hmm. when you're engaged in a conversation with someone, like I, I'm invested in this conversation and wherever it goes, I'm willing to get to its end. And then after that will be after, but I'm here now and I can't yeah. just push a button and be like, well, I'm just going to yeah. ignore you. It's like, plus I will look silly if I do that. Yeah. Plus it has a benefit of you're getting to know that particular person in case you see them online again, you might be able that. to be more friendly. Yeah. Uh, more, more inclusive, I guess. And I like the idea but, of posting the video afterwards and being like, Hey, we had a really cool talk. Would you mind if we just share that with people? Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. might help. That could be your podcast, dude. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Eh? Where's Chad? Why isn't he on here? <laughs> that could be your podcast. It's like, hey, just talking to people on Facebook about stuff, and I, and I just want to see, can we hash this out? Yeah, like right. the virtual summit, we'll call it, or whatever you want to call your podcast. What is your podcast name, by the way? Have you come up with a name? We haven't come up with a name. Bourbon uh, Street, baby. Yeah? Yeah, know. it's right behind you. Yeah. Oh, bur oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good name. Yeah, that would be good. Joey looks like he wants to say something. My bad, my bad. Well, Joey, what you I got? Just, um, I, I was just, well, I was just wondering if there's kind of like a um, a pre se conversation to kind of gauge where a person's mind and personality is to see number one, are they capable of grasping the tools that se can give them, or and, and number two, are they willing to to use them at all? Um, cause I was, I'm thinking, could, could it just be, it can, hmm, I, I, it can be very unproductive to, to get into a conversation and especially an SE conversation and with somebody who just is just shut down and not willing. So I'm just wondering if there's, if there's like some, some questions that we could ask or, um, a conversation, a pre-conversation we can have with somebody to kind of gauge where they're at um, cognitively and if they're not closed-minded they are before we even begin on a specific plane. So right. just one, one point, uh, actually just two quick points. When I'm doing SE, I always make sure that my perspective is not, I'm here to teach this person someone something or prove to them why they're wrong. My mindset's always, I'm trying to understand how you're right. And, we, and if we can have an honest conversation, then we can work on that together. And if we end up getting to the conclusion of how I figured out how you're right, then I'll believe whatever's there. But if we can't get there working together, that says way more by the virtue of us working together trying to figure out how you're right and we couldn't get anywhere than me saying, well, look, you're wrong because we couldn't get to this conclusion. And so when you have the mindset of, I'm not trying to train you, I'm not trying to teach you, and I'm not trying to advocate for anything. I'm just trying to have an honest conversation with you. And I wanna find out how you're right that is the mindset that you should have with 4SE, in my opinion. 
And then all you need at that point is just someone who's willing to have an honest conversation with you. And if you don't have that, you can't do SE. But that also says something more about the person who's not willing to engage with you. That's not your problem. That's a, that person's problem sort of thing. And I, and in those kinds of situations, there's only so much you can do. Often I've tried just giving them the board and the marker board and be like, why don't you ask me questions? And you can see what I was trying to do. And if we just switch roles and you can feel like you're more in control, this will, you'll see exactly like the kind of conversation that I want to have. And you can ask me about anything you want and we can just build ourselves up to that. You know, hey, why don't we switch that question just slightly to making it more focused on the methodology rather than just strictly targeting the conclusion. And then at the end of it, it's like, you want to swap back or do you just want to go back and forth and move to this new topic that I want to talk about at the beginning? You could totally do that too. Gary, you look like you want to say something. Sorry for making those points extended. But what do you oh, think no. about that as a mindset for doing SE since you've done it? I think, I think it's awesome. Um, it's building rapport, right? You know, a big part of it. And I, I was just actually typing out uh, Rappaport's rules. Are you familiar with that? Remember Rap uh, Rappaport's rules. Uh, it's, a, it's about how to best engage someone in a conversation with whom, uh, rather than, a, a, you know, a heated debate. You're, remember I brought up this thing. I'm about sorry, when you're, saying, when you're saying Rappaport, do you mean Rappaport? Yeah, The Rappaport. English word Rappaport? You're saying no. it with a French accent. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Rappaport. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, we have a rap someone's with... name. This is someone's name. Oh, rap I thought he was saying like, rules. I'm trying to have a rap port with someone. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Like, that's how no, we say it. No, it's here. not a rap -por. A rap port? Rap a port. Rap yeah, that's how we rules. say that. There you yeah. go. Now so I did say rapport, building rapport. <laughs> <laughs> there's my French Canadian coming out. And then there's rap -a ports rules, which is about like steel manning a, a person's, mm. your interlocutor's argument. Right. Uh, and trying to you know, present them to themselves in the best possible light possible mm. so that they're more um, inclined to uh, have an, you know, a, a pleasant conversation as opposed to... Yeah, like to, here's the best case scenario. If this was the case, do you still see chinks in the armor, basically? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, it, and it's actually, like I said about steel manning, mm -hmm. it's about putting the other... It's putting your interlocutor's uh, argument in such a good way that they wish they could have presented it to you that way. To yeah. Begin. yeah. 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 And that's, and you build a lot of respect uh, from your interlocutor that way. Yeah. Because it, it should, it demonstrates that you're really paying attention right. and that you're are trying to uh, give them as much uh, benefit um, as possible before you destroy them. It's you like know, who's really good at that by the way, right? <laughs> You know who's really good at steel manning? Matt Delhunty? I don't know. Who do you? Who uh, Sam, Sam Harris. Sam Harris. Oh, is he? Good. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I fall asleep, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, so before we were talking about like how when you're having conversations, you're more like interested in just getting the posts and, and, and throw them out there and then just trying to persuade people who are watching the argument happen have better counter a higher standard of counter arguments yeah. to deal with those guys have you found other people responding to those links in a in a positive or productive way like has that been a helpful way of resolving yeah people? generally when i when i post like that uh somebody's got a erroneous view or false view of something and i and i bring over like a snopes article or or google something and put it to them usually what I see is like two or three people will come right behind me supporting what I just said. Mm. Uh, very few, uh, well, few anyway, people will come up there and support the false view. Uh, but I find that the people that do support the false view are take a real umbrage with me trying to correct it and will resort quickly to ad hominem attacks, which I can just ignore. Larry, have you had people throw the the business at you that oh Snopes is you know corrupt liberal media <laughs> anyway? And I mean Snopes sure. doesn't matter because sure. they'll you've yeah. heard that. How do you react to that? Oh, especially if you use like Wikipedia and they come back with a conservapedia article. Whoa, I didn't know there was a thing like that. Okay. Oh yeah, and there's there's a they're starting a new Snopes thing which supports the, the conservatives, which of course is false based. Uh, anybody who's a uh, fact-based, like I would say media company, uh, 
you know, we just go to the, the usual sites that's, that support fact versus fiction. But if you're a strong right wing conservative evangelical, that's not going to work for you because the facts are definitely lot liberal leaning, as they say. Mm. Uh, but what are you going to do? I mean, this the facts are on our side. Yeah, just work with what you got. I just hate the idea of like a a conservative fact world and a non conservative fact. Yes, world. I agree with you. 100%. I don't like that. Um, Joey, where do you see this going? Say like five years from now like is this going to get better or is this going to get worse as new technology continues to you know come into our mindset and world being well i think it um i think with as with most things it just it depends on us it de, it depends on and how we adapt to it and how how we choose to use it as long as people like us continue to do what we do um we just focus on what we as individuals and we as uh, the groups that we identify with have power over and just do our best with whatever comes mm -hmm. including new technology so that would be my response to that dread how do you feel about this and any points in general um no no you just posted something that's i just set up the perfect i just set up the perfect ball on the tee for you <laughs> well i guess i i didn't quite get the question do you have points in general for how to have good uh, means of communication with people? Over oh, the okay. Any well, tips just... that you would recommend that well, you may sure. have recently posted? Yes or no? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm literally hallucinating. <laughs> like that's the slowest I can throw the ball, Gary. It's going to fall yeah. to the ground before it goes yeah. off the plate. It's going to hit me right in the head. <laughs> he, did, he did a punt. Uh, no. <laughs> did I understand the question? Because I feel like my answer. No, was you got you got it, Joey. We're, <laughs> we're waiting for Dread to like come to shore. Okay, so so I did. I posted the uh, Rappaport's rules. Uh huh. Um, and it's about uh, you know attempting to re-express your target's position so mm -hmm. clearly, mm -hmm. vividly, and fairly that your target says thanks. I wish I had thought of putting it that way. Secondly, you should list any points of agreement especially if they are not matters of general or widespread agreement. So that way you're clear on what the points are. I dig it. And then you should mention anything you have learned from your target. And then finally, and this is like after that. you've done all the other three, that you are permitted then to then uh, introduce any word of rebuttal or criticism. Cool. Hey, I'm also going to throw another thing out too. I think things are constantly getting better. And there's always going to be the growing pains of like, oh man, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is such a big problem. I can't believe there's such a huge mess to fix. Recognizing that mess, being aware of the problem, knowing that there's uh, uh, an issue to be resolved is the first step to getting the problem resolved. And we've spent maybe a millennia thinking, I only need to know what's going on in my own town. I only need to go on, know what's going on in my own village in my own family, in my own house. And now we have this worldview that's opening up to the world where everyone's staying communicating with each other. And we're seeing things that we don't like. And that's a good thing because now we know what we can fix. And that's always going to be the growing pain of like, man, this is such a daunting problem, but we fixed bigger problems before. And now it's just the idea of like, okay, what can we do now to resolve this? We're going we're gonna to make some mistakes, but we're going to find out what works the best and just keep moving on from there. That'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. all right uh all right. closing out the show pretty soon how about we do a roll call eric would you mind posting me the link to your music video again and then also plugging it and uh podcast news what's going on with you in the future what should we check out yeah yeah uh, i'll post the link uh here here in a second but made a fun little video with my daughter uh on uh, uh a cover of an 80s song from men at work nice uh using COVID 19 uh <laughs> lyrics and it's very kentucky specific i threw a, a couple good <laughs> shout outs to our governor yeah um and uh yeah it's fun and and uh joey i'm still i still want some feedback from you because you're the comedian i want to know yeah. if i'm if i'm working as a lyricist or not but oh, I, I, are you talking about the the video that you did about the governor yeah kentucky governor, I, I very much enjoyed it i think it did, you did a great job cool cool nice nice high um, praise yeah, and then, please post the link I'll put the link on here in, in a minute. Uh, but yeah, yes, uh, uh, I keep I keep threatening that we are Chad and I, Chad and the Paler and I are going to put our podcast together. I'm going to take your advice, Ty. We're gonna we're gonna just take what we got. 
um, I think, and get it. Got to let it baby there. go. Yeah, yeah. just got to gotta so, let it float. It's going to be all right. Yeah. And then about, I also think a follow-up of doing those conversations with Facebook people would be really yeah, cool too. That would yeah. be neat. I, I got to build up the courage for that. I don't know if I got the courage. You to can start with your friends. Do you already yeah. do with people in the summit? Just be like, hey, summit guy, yeah, yeah. do you want to? Yeah, I'll I'll volunteer. I have crazy stuff I I think about all the time. So like, yeah, I yeah, I right. that's what we're here for. Yeah. Good. Okay. Dread, where are you at? Where can we find you? Um. Well, of course, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, P Y R A T E. Nice. Um. But I did want to mention that I uh I connected with uh the uh, executive director or um, the person that runs the show over at our local college um, and um, had asked about uh, the possibility of uh, running a, a short course there on um, critical thinking and as the oh, tools I love of skepticism. This. And wow. she, is, she is all over it. Um, so of course there's a lot of resources over at uh, skeptic skeptic.org, Michael Shermer, uh, Skepticism 101. Um, the uh, baloney detection toolkit. Um, so I think uh, I'm going to put something together here. Uh, so once college opens up, we'll get something rolling. And that using that as a means to sort of uh, see what interest there is locally uh, for people to, you know, have these have these SE discussions as well. I dig it's it. kind of like generating some uh, some interest to to SE through. Uh, something that other people pay to attend. <laughs> I really love it. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Good. Joey, where are you at? Where can we find you? Um, uh, for my music and um, comedy, you just uh, you can follow me on Twitter at um, JWK hates the news. Um, and uh, just look up JW Kennedy on, on Facebook as a channel for my um, street epistemology uh, it's going to be speak your beautiful mind on Twitter. You can follow follow it on Twitter at at at, at your beautiful mind. That's spelled U R. So at your beautiful mind, and speak your beautiful mind on um, YouTube. Um, and uh, there's no there's no content yet on either one of those those channels those channels yet until you know once everything starts lifting up and um, you know start getting into that. Also, I just recorded. Um, a first podcast with um, a guy named uh, Carl who um, who does SE. His his name for his SE channel is um, uh, Campfire Combos, and That's we've decided cool. to get together. And we're um, we well, we don't know how how far this is going to go, but um, what it's called the channel is going to going to be called Centratheist, and it's about um, we're basically just just two atheists that consider ourselves centrist when it comes to po politics and it's basically our our perspective on things from you know not being not identifying with either the right or mm -hmm. the left and our you know our thoughts on things so yeah okay very cool very cool. cool i would dare say that if you're watching this video you probably already know about my channel so i'm going to make a recommendation that you check out an interview with a friend of mine named fanny anzai uh, she just did an interview with a guy named Lawrence Krauss, who's apparently a person that uh, Eric respects a lot. So yes. that must <laughs> yeah, mean he's no a doubt. famous atheist dude. And he's we a physicist. Support... A, oh, okay. An incredible and, physicist, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> 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 and you can check out that video on Fanny Ann Zai's channel. Her name is F-A-N-N-Y, last name A-N-Z-A-I. Check out her stuff. It's really good. Good call. Larry, why don't you close this out? Okay, uh, my content is basically on digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button. Once you go to the blogging, read articles. You can listen to uh, atheist-themed music. And uh, you can also find the archives of all of these radio shows that we have done on Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, if you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and we'll answer them on future shows. And if you uh, have... Uh, podcast players you can find our podcast on itunes stitcher luminary podcast iheart etc etc also i have a book on uh, amazon it's called uh, atheism what's it all about what's the point of what's all about yeah, that's right uh and it's basically uh, articles from my facebook page but you can have them all in hardback if you like or softback if you like also, random manual note, reading. <laughs> the atheist community of Austin has been reposting those blog posts in their newsletter in the SE corner, and they've been doing it all throughout uh, 2019. 
And so if you are in Austin area and you have the Atheist Community of Austin book and there's SE Corner, the two page book, that's this guy or wherever, wherever <laughs> his screen's at. That's this, this dude. This guy wrote that. So good stuff, man. Well, thanks for the plug. I also have a YouTube channel under Doubter 5, but the content's kind of old, but of course it's still valuable. It's all about atheism. And as I like to close out the show generally, uh, I remind everybody that everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, y'all. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Peace.